Markets Managing Director, Kristen Hawkrow. Kristen, a very good morning to you and welcome. Morning, thank you. Now, please take us through the process of doing your background checks on these applicants. Okay, so we follow quite a few different processes. The, the criminal record checking process is quite advanced these days. Historically, we used a name, surname and ID. But since 2007, we've been using fingerprints. Um, the process is that we tap into the South African Police System's APHIS, or Automated Fingerprint Identification System. So we capture an applicant's fingerprints, submit them electronically, and then we re receive a result back electronically from mm -hmm. the system. And then our other processes, a lot of them are manual. Previous employment references, we contact the references. Qualification verifications, we contact institutions directly. And then we tapped into a number of data sources, so your credit bureaus, um, we verify driver's licenses via the, the traffic department. So we follow different processes for the different checks that we conduct. So it's an in-depth credit check and reference check. Is that what you say? So different uh, companies conduct different checks on mm. their job applicants depending on their employment processes and procedures. But we offer the full range of background screening checks. Mm -hmm. Correct. What do your findings tell you? Well, I think uh, there's a frightening situation happening in South Africa. I think the fact that uh, the job market is tough, unemployment is high, mm -hmm. I think that some job applicants are, are desperate uh, to get into the job market and will take chances when it comes to faking qualifications, uh, misrepresenting themselves, being dishonest up front about their criminal records. Mm -hmm. Fake qualifications, has that been a big one for you lately? Well, I think the, the media itself... Uh, has, has, can attest to the amount of, of uh, qualification fraud that's occurring in South Africa. And I think that doesn't even kind of touch the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. It's a huge problem. We're sitting with around 7% of uh, qualifications that we cannot verify for a number of reasons. Institutions close down, but there certainly are those qualifications which are fraudulent. State enterprises, do they use your services for that matter? Because there's a number of those issues in terms of qualifications that come from that sector. We definitely have clients uh, within uh, state institutions and slowly but surely more and more of them are coming on board. But do they take it seriously, judging by the number of uh, characters that has uh, come up? Um, with, none, with fake qualifications for that matter. So I think the more publicity and the more this becomes, uh, government institutions become aware of this, the mm -hmm. more it's becoming a process that they feel is, is critical to their recruitment process, or mm -hmm. even not even the recruitment process, just so that they don't end up in the media. Does your, uh, uh, does your study have any recommendations for employers? Well, when it comes mainly to criminal record checks, our uh, advice that we give to job applicants, first of all, is to be honest. So misrepresenting yourself or saying that you don't have a criminal record up front, the, appli the applicant can immediately be, be disqualified from the process just for mis misrepresenting themselves on the application form. Mm -hmm. Our advice to companies, businesses, is to also give those individuals with criminal records a chance. Not everyone who's got a criminal record is unemployable. Those people can be given a chance. The, the process that we recommend they follow is to look at the criminal record, look at how old the record is, is it relevant to the position applied for. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, it's not a blanket uh, uh, situation where we're saying just because someone has a criminal record they cannot be employed. So if somebody had a driving license offence, uh, you can't take that in terms of he's in, uh, in a finance department and judge him upon that, uh, upon what he's supposed to do. Correct. But if he had a fraud case mm -hmm. or an uh, individual working with children, if they had a sexual offence, then we would take that seriously and say that they're not suitable for that job applied for. What are one's chances uh, of uh, gaining employment uh, if you're convicted uh, a criminal for that matter? Well, again, I think it's a process of education and I think South African business needs to come come to the table. If we're expecting job applicants to be honest on their application forms, then we need business to be fair in the process that they use when using this data. Mm -hmm. How serious are the crimes for which these applicants have been convicted? Uh, some of them that you've now utilized. Well, I think the statistics show that 25% of, of, of the convictions are for theft. Mm -hmm. But further to that, of the 12% of job applicants that have a criminal record, we're finding 38% of those individuals are repeat offenders, and a further 20% have more than three criminal records. So there we're looking at some serious issues. Now, traffic, Road Traffic Violations Act, uh, or, or violations for that matter, why are you taking that in consideration? 
Well, that it's just coming up in, in the searches, but mm -hmm. we're looking at individuals who in the in, in the taxi industry. We're looking at individuals who are in, uh, applying for jobs as drivers, and I think then it's irrelevant. Um, it's relevant to take in, that into account. Mm -hmm. Who are the biggest offenders? Entry level prospective employees, or is it long service ones? It comes, it, it's across the board. So mm -hmm. people with criminal records across the board, from your low-end applicants to your executives. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody is listening to, our, to us right now and looking at the program, uh, how do they get hold of EMPA and uh, if they want to use your service?